back yet again this is episode what 22 23 somewhere in there somewhere in there welcome y'all this is the post podium podcast i am your co-host aramis and this is key Ooh, and <laughs> breaking phones yeah trying breaking to get the live right. going on facebook and it's not working for me just yet but All go right, ahead we'll with it. it we'll get it we'll get it that's cool listen listen i think the bills have to do one simple thing to get themselves in position to win the next three games and I, it's 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 really simple when you think about it, okay? Tune in to find out, right? Stay with us, okay? Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, as you know, this is the home of the All Truth No Sodium Takes. It is. And it's a little different without the music, isn't it? Huh? It's a little different without that music, it is, isn't it? It is very different. But the cool thing is when we really start getting into, you know, certain segments and stuff like that, we can play some music yeah, and all music, that. Like, smooth jazz. Oh, yeah. Wow. Sm- what? Smooth jazz. You got to cater to everybody. You got to cater. Crickets is going right You got here. to cater to everybody. Crickets is going right in nah. this spot where you say Crickets. smooth jazz. Dang. Right when you say smooth jazz. Disrespectful. Right there. Smooth jazz. Uh, <laughs> this whole episode now is going to be surrounded around smooth <laughs> I'm jazz. I'm going to talk like that the whole show. Yeah, Josh Allen needs to. No, I'm not going to say that. I think they just turned us off. Um, so, so, yeah, so this, this episode is going to be. Obviously, the way we're talking is going to be a recorded episode, but um, our Thursday episodes, uh, which are going to air on Friday, um, those are going to be the pregame episodes. Those are going to be the ramp up for the for the upcoming opponent. Um, you know, it, depending on you know how hot the, the 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 loss or win was, and if we still have things we got to get off our chest. There may be some things that come up about about what happened on uh, Monday night. Well, but. yeah, I, I think they're, they're, by nature of Thursday being press conference day, that's going to be the, the essence. But I've pretty much gotten three, four showers between now and the game, and I'm, I'm clean. I'm washed. I got a new attitude. I'm ready to go. Got all the tears I out. I got the all rain. the tears out. You know what? I didn't cry, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Um, let's let's start with stuff we've heard. Yeah, um, let's do I, that. I, I, yeah, let's, let's just get to that. Um, cause I, I got, man, I, I can't wait to play this. I can't wait to play with, listen, we, well, you we got, got this first. take from Greg Cosell. Huh? No, 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 uh, Let's, let's get the stuff we heard first and then we'll go into that. All right. So, uh, I just wanted, wanted to rectify or correct what we were talking about last week when we were talking about who blew Spencer Brown up in the, in the game. It was actually, uh, John Franklin Myers, oh, uh, who yeah. blew right through him. Yeah. But, but, um, yeah, I mean, we're 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 gonna get into Spencer Brown in, in depth today. I think that's gonna be a central piece of what I want to speak Thank to. Good. I hope so. Yeah. Um, yeah. but obviously, stuff we heard uh, once again centers around our boy fourteen. Can we leave fourteen alone? What they talking about now? Let's see the Maddie Glab issue. Oh, you don't know about that? The Maddie Glab issue? Yeah. Let me indulge you. Okay. Hot mic in the press room. There's no control over Steph Diggs. Dude's going to do what he wants to do. He'll look in my face and say, F you. That's how he treats everybody. Picked up on a, on a hot mic. Are so, you serious? Oh, yes, 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 yes. So now what we're looking at is, uh, uh, let's see. So what she said to kind of apologize and walk it back, the media was waiting for players to come out of the press conferences uh, when a reporter jokingly told me to go get Steph on Diggs. I said, I don't have control over him. Steph Marsh is the beat of his own drum, and I love that about him. He has a playful relationship with our video equipment, or our, our video department, and that's why I said he probably wouldn't say yes to me grabbing him for an interview. You didn't say he, he probably wouldn't come. Yeah, ain't no you problem. You say F you. Right, right. <laughs> There's a big difference between yeah. F you and he's probably not going to do this interview. It, it might behoove him to just stay away at this point. It might behoove you to stay away from any interviews for him for a while. I, I would be surprised if she's allowed anywhere around him at this point. It's going to be, it's yeah. I mean, and the funny thing about it, and, and it's not about Maddie Glenn, I'm not going to make this whole show about it, but I couldn't really subscribe to One Bill's Life when she was on for the longest time. Oh, yeah, I can't stand her voice. It's You know, and, and I got used to the voice, but it was like. 
you got used to that thing? I got used to it. Okay. But for me, it was more so it was like, um, you know, she was bringing content. She was bringing, she actually started to bring substance. Okay. Um, you know, because for me, Murphy got old. So. Yeah, Murphy just, he, he likes to tell too many stories. Man. He tells too, and he didn't play to tell the story so i don't right. really care right. i mean if this was about wg uh, i'm sorry wkbw or something sure but um but yeah so i don't know what's going to come of that she had issued her apology and then our boy trayvon Diggs responds to the response Ooh. he tweets out tuh they got it they turn on you so quick gotta get bro somewhere safe trayvon 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 the actions and words of maddie lab do not reflect <laughs> the buffalo bills knows okay the, i don't want to say the fans because the buffalo bills the buffalo bills fans maybe yeah but yeah the ones that that really see through it and think about it and think objectively it, it we don't need to get him safe he's safe he's oh, fine no doubt, no doubt. yeah um, the, the only thing i'm worried about though is the if this is the behind the scenes thought about steph diggs as a person because this is a personal statement. This this ain't a professional statement, right? This is not a criticism of 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 anything about his profession. This is a this is a personal reference, mm-hmm. right? If this is how they think about him behind the scenes, I mean, how many other people are in, in the building are thinking like that? Like obviously, Sean McDermott thought low enough of him to say, "I'm I'm very concerned about him not being in the building." Like you don't do that to a guy who's been a captain on your team, who's been the best player on your team since you traded for him. Mm-hmm. You don't you, you just don't do that to a guy like that unless there are thoughts like this going on behind the scenes. Like all this stuff is starting to come out now, but this is stuff that that if you if you know how to read between the lines like we do, you can see that this is where that stuff comes from. It's not it, it it's not just a you know random all of a sudden Stefan Diggs wakes up and, and and he's a diva. He he's expected greatness no matter where he's been. I mean, let's put it like this. If this kind of stuff didn't happen, this show wouldn't exist. Um, that's that's <laughs> that's, that's really too. the crux of why we're here. Yeah. Uh, to try to steer that you know, we're not trying to influence people, we're trying to get you to think about things differently and and, and by a virtue of saying that, that is let's not do, you know, team speak. Let's not all believe the same thing. Let's all analyze it ourselves. Let's right. all figure out what's going on and and make your own decisions. In this case, a hot mic, you said something stupid, you got comfortable, and it got recorded. It is what it is. Right. Luckily for her, Stefan Diggs does not care about Maddie Glab. But you won't see Stefan Diggs on 25 questions with Maddie Glab either. No, not, so, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, I mean. I, I, I mean, I, I, I like calling stuff like this out, though. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, really. The, the the statement afterwards is and I'm sorry that I got caught statement. It's not and I'm sorry I said that statement. Right. Is it is is more of a well we all know how we are. We're a family. No. It's, it's yeah. that, that that flies in the face of the family uh, atmosphere that they have going on. Like if it if there was if there was really remorse, there would have been I apologize to Stefan Diggs for my statements about his character or about his person. That's a remorseful statement. Mm-hmm. If you're really trying to walk it back, if you're really trying to own what you said and you feel bad about saying it. But you didn't feel bad about saying it. You really think that. Mm-hmm. You're just trying to brush it off. And the, the part that frustrates me the most about this is that the Bills sanctioned this. She works for the Bills. So I'm pretty sure the PR department gave her this statement, you need to post this. They may w- whether she felt it or not. Yeah, they may have. Like, I mean, it's it's kind of unprofessional. I, I don't want to say I'm professional because what I'm what I'm getting at is it's not that typical, you know. We have a stance of this and oh, where you stand. Be, no, it's, it's it's kind of it sounds more personal. So in her instance, maybe she did actually uh, uh, issue a statement, which yeah. is fine. I don't really care. I mean, I've said things about people and people said things about me, and, and I didn't go home and cry. I'm, I hope they didn't go home and cry. Yeah. Um, we're all adults, so it is what it is. But I thought you got to be careful when you're on a hot mic. Be careful. And I mean, I've learned that I don't know if you guys listen when we do the when we do the lives. I don't say jack. <laughs> I don't say nothing because I don't know when we're recording, when it's not. But I know stuff is happening, and, and you'll yeah. hear us laughing. And, and, and but I, I'm cognizant as a professional, mm-hmm. which she is not us. She is. You have to know. I mean, the room is so big, and the eyes are that they picked it up when they can't pick up questions from the reporters. Reporters ask honest questions to McDermott. To Bean, to uh, Dorsey, to, and we can't hear Jack, but they got that. Yep. Is this a setup? 
I think it is. <laughs> I think like, and and I I I sometimes go on bunny trails like this, right? But mm-hmm. I think we're we're so close to seeing, it, like, like I'll put it this way. I might be a bit of a conspiracy theorist by trying to connect all these dots. <laughs> Just a right? bit. But that's what you do. And that's but, fine. Well, that's fine. I, I, okay, but I like but it. To my credit though, a lot of the dots that I've connected Go ahead and see it. come out to be right. But you know what and, and and I like that's why I like doing a show with you because you'll have me like remember what I said you got five minutes to change my mind, I'll go. Yeah. You do. Usually. I mean even if I still <laughs> believe what I what I believe, I'm like, wow, that was that was that was deep. That was good. I like that. <laughs> On the fly. Because I thought, sure, you know about this this issue with Maddie Glab and, and whatnot, but yeah, evidently, no, you really didn't. I, I, it's, it's weird. Like, I, the point no, I'm no. at now is I, I don't really have a ton of time uh, yeah. to do a whole lot of studying, but I try to make sure to get the you know the, the, the key stuff that we'll get talk the basic about. But, down. Um, I, I, I did want to say this, though, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is a – I think this is the effect of – Someone in the building having had enough of what's been happening over the last six years. If you look at uh, Brian Dayball leaving the Bills, Mm -hmm. that started a cascade of coaches leaving. I think that was the point. You got that that guy in particular had a choice. He had a choice to stay with this quarterback that he groomed and and turned into a monster. Mm Mm-hmm. And and win a Super Bowl before moving on, right? right? And let's be honest about it. He had he had a better shot in the last two years that he's been with the Giants of winning a Super Bowl here rather than there. So if it was really about winning for him, and I'm not saying I'm not saying if it was really about winning for him as if he chose to not win by going to the Giants, right? But, right, right. but, I, but I'm simply saying we had the better roster to it, do it now, right? Yeah. Right. If if he really wanted to, he could have stayed and chased the championship ring, right? But because of what was being reported, because of what was going on behind closed doors, because of all this, you know, infighting and bickering and 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 and, and um, uh, grandstanding and 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 you know people poking their chests out and, and, and stuff like that uh you know it's i mean the 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 the, the arrogance of 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 uh uh sean mcdermott all that stuff going on behind the scenes that boiled up to a point where brian dayball said i'm out yeah i think i, I think that and i think you know he didn't get the control he wanted and he saw where the cap was going for me you're not drafting for me we're yeah. not going to have any money soon, and I don't have the players I need. I'm not going to get the players I need, so this, i got to get out what I'm getting is good. Right, right. And, I, I yeah, I, I totally agree with that. And I think all of this together mm-hmm. points to how things like the Matty Glass statement are able to get out because at, at, after, you, after you start seeing things like Brian Dayball saw him at that point, I think a lot of other coaches saw. Chad Hall saw it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go over with the Jaguars. Oh, yeah, that that was telling when you did a linear move, right? A linear move to go to a team with lesser. Well, you don't have Stephon Diggs. You know, you got Zay Jones and was no Calvin really wasn't even there when he. Oh well, right. yeah, he was. He just came back because he left this year. Right. Um, the year the 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 off season after 13 seconds. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, not not the off, the off season after thir- after 13 seconds. You take that loss to Cincinnati, and your defensive coordinator is just like, I need a break. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a break I'm and gonna, then go work for NFL Network. Uh, you're right, right. I mean, the, the, the 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 public statement was that he was taking a year off. Yeah. Did he you hear? G- no, huh? did you hear that on the, on the broadcast on Monday? What they said, Leslie Frazier's taking a year off. Yeah, they did say that. Yeah, right. right. They said it a couple of times. He's taking a year off. He's taking a year off. What? No, he's not. He got another job. He gone. But I'm sorry, Bar- guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just wanted to, I just wanted to think about uh, put this out there. While I was thinking. Did oh, you notice how show. much? Why you apologize? Did you? <laughs> hey, you right. <laughs> did you notice how many times they said the Bills like to do this, that, and third on defense? How do you know what they like doing? They talk like we still got the same defense as last year, right? How do you? They like to? No, we don't have to stuff. They said was erroneous because that was the old regime. Do I miss it? Me personally, maybe an army of one. Yes, I missed the regime I had, but I also missed the fact that McDermott had somebody watch the defense while he could oversee stuff. I missed that more than anything, right? Um, but 
Yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking on the broadcast, oh, you got to watch this because the Bills do this. Historically, they ain't no history. This is the first one. One, one, one last thing about the game before we before we move on. Yeah. Um, well, actually, not one last thing because I think what what I want to what I want to play. I got a I got a quote from Greg Cosell. Yeah, we got a couple of stuffs we heard. So. Okay, good. good. Um, <laughs> so I just want to say this real quick about about the game. This is yet again another circumstance in a key game in a, in a in a big moment where you have a special teams mistake, mm-hmm. right? Low snap, your punter, for whatever reason, kicks it in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And then your coverage gets outrun. Yeah. And you lose the game on special teams, essentially. Because I'm I'm, I'm equating the 13 seconds game to if you had had just squib kicked that. Yep. The Chiefs don't have the time that they had to go down and score what they scored. Yep. Right? Yep. So, So, now, mind you, two totally different. Special teams coordinators now we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Same issue. It ha- it can't be the special teams guy. You got rid of that one. Now 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 all of a sudden, who's left to look at? You ain't got Fraser in the house no more. Right. You ain't got nobody else to look at no more. Your offensive coordinator is a rookie. Everybody already thinks he needs he needs to go anyway. So instead of getting on him, we're gonna look at the guy that put him in that position in the first place. Mm-hmm. Right? I, yeah, I, I mean, I was gonna. I, I just wanted to stay on that point for a second. Uh, yeah. He was asked in an interview yesterday, uh, in his his Zoom interview, uh, about the punt. He said, "I thought a lot of things could have gone better. To snap the punt, the coverage got to pin him on the sideline. So I guess he he assumed they're gonna pin him on the sideline. He assumed that. I don't know, but when you, like I said, when you oversee, when you take yourself and put yourself as a defensive coordinator, you can't oversee like you should as a head coach. So that that compounds your point of him being a defensive-minded head coach yep. because that's where I agree. If you're going to be a defensive-minded head coach, you cannot be a defensive coordinator. I just I, You can't. Uh, <laughs> uh, who, who's done it? Um, um, what you call? Uh, no, it's been guy, done, but what I'm it. saying is he. I'm saying you in, 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 in terms of McDermott. I'm talking to McDermott. Now, you can't be – the defensive coordinator when you got these blunders going on. You got a first year offensive coordinator. Right. Well, who I, you're grooming supposedly. All, all I'm really trying to point out is m- there's only been one coach so far in the last 10 years that's been successful at do- at doing that with any kind of success whatsoever and that's Bill Belichick. All right, let me just put like I don't right. like it then. The the defensive coordinator <laughs> for the Cowboys now is um Dan what what's what's the defensive coordinator coordinator's name? For Who's the that? Cowboys. Uh, Dan Quinn. Uh, oh, yeah. Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn was the head coach in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Also the also the coordinator. He's calling the plays there, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Didn't work out for him. No. Um, who else? I mean, I'm sure I'm sure I could probably think of other names, but I think this is yet another circumstance where this wasn't this wasn't the 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 best move that he could have made. No. You know, you you had an opportunity to go and get a you, you. Let's be honest, you had another two opportunity to go hire Shane Steichen. Mm-hmm. Now, would Shane Steichen would have uh, uh, would Shane Steichen had wanted to come here from from Philly after they were just in the Super Bowl? Right, maybe not. There's other guys you could have went and got. I mean, Eric Bieniemy wanted out of uh, out of Kansas City. Sign him. What do you know about this? Uh, the Raiders offensive court. He was hired last year when we hired Dorsey. Uh, this Mike Lombardi. He came from. He came from a background of awesome offensive assistant, the San Francisco offensive assistant, in, in the Jets offensive assistant in, with quarterbacks and wide receivers in New England. Now he traveled with Josh McDaniels over to Vegas. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't know how good he's going to be yet, but I mean, that's that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Look at his pedigree. He's worked in different facets of offense. As yeah. opposed to Dorsey being a quarterback coach, and that's that's see that for me, I want somebody that's done it or has been involved in more than one component of your side. Right. You don't just become a quarterback coach and then be oh I'm offensive coordinator. What about what is your offensive line strategy? What is your wide receiver? What is what is your what is your you know what what is your philosophy? He doesn't have one. All he knows is what he wants his quarterbacks to do. Right. And see that's the kind of hires that the Bills make over and over and over again that. Lean, they lend to your point of not having an offensive line or not having the right wide receiver yep. because he doesn't know. Right. He hasn't been in those rooms yet. So, yep. you know, he doesn't know what he has until it's too late. Right. 
And I think that's, you know, ultimately it's it's just a, it's just a matter of Sean's performance as a head coach in terms of hiring the right people started off great, but once the success came on, it started to the, the, you could see the circle start to close in because he obviously started to feel like he could trust less and less people. And I'm not specifically saying that that's the reason he didn't hire a different offensive coordinator or a different defensive coordinator, but it does make you wonder the why mm -hmm. he didn't choose to go out and get guys who were more qualified or guys who were better than the guys that he had in-house. And if, again, bringing this back to the whole mantra that that that, that Sean McDermott brought here, brought here, if if all of these movements – if all of these exclusions or all of these decisions that that have that have been made in terms of who hasn't been hired, who hasn't been signed, who hasn't been drafted ha have all been about culture, then I think you got it backwards. Mm -hmm. As as a head coach, you you you're expecting you're expecting that the game is going to be won by something that happens in the locker room right? instead of on yeah. the field. Yeah, and that's the main problem I have with them. Uh, guys on Facebook, just in case you didn't realize, this is actually a, a recorded show for uh, the Post Podium Podcast. is actually broadcasting on YouTube. So just go ahead over to the Post Podium Podcast and subscribe. Hit the little ring-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling. Make sure you hit. <laughs> like you like that? that? <laughs> Subscribe, like, comment, whatever you want to do. I will have this, this live up the whole time just letting you know that if you want to know who I'm talking to or why my hands are moving in front of the camera like this, <laughs> it's because we're actually talking. We're actually working with a real camera on YouTube. So if you want to help us out, just subscribe over to the YouTube channel. We have, what, you say 23? 23 uh, videos so far? Uh, 22, 23? No, but this will be 22. After okay, so we have 20 videos up. Enjoy. You know, catch up with us, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll watch our growth, and we'll, we'll call you family. Um, also, if you like to listen while you're working or, or while you're driving, go to Spotify. These shows are also on Spotify under the same Post Podium podcast. Uh, while I still have some eyes, I wanted to plug again. Uh, my friend, my ex-coworker, uh, who's doing big things. If you've been blessed, please bless others by volunteering. Either donate, uh, you know, a, a small a small uh, amount or donate some time. Get downtown to, to the uh, to the uh, uh, Buffalo Library where she's doing uh, giveaways for the homeless. She, she feeds the homeless out of her own truck uh, every Sunday out of her own truck. People, the volunteers, nobody's getting paid. This is just something to put on her heart. So let's help her help everybody else uh, get along. I love it. I love it. Okay. Uh, what am I seeing here? Raiders fans? Oh, no, don't worry about that. That's, that's oh. later. Okay. Uh, the, <laughs> other, the other thing I have uh, in terms is another Diggs issue. Obviously, you heard about Michael Irvin. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, he would have pulled somebody in the room and punched him in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, he said Troy Aikman would have would have would have punched he would have punched him in the mouth if he ever made a gesture like that to him in a game. I'm like, no, he wouldn't have. No, he no, Michael Irvin, shut your mouth. I mean, you know, you know, Mr. Eagle, Troy Aikman, is, Troy Aikman was not going to sock you out. He was not. You think okay. Troy Aikman would have socked Michael Irvin out? I, I think Troy Aikman at that point in their in their careers probably thought he had enough power to do something like that and get away with it. Yeah. Probably. I mean Michael Irvin, I think Michael Irvin was well, you know, he had his own demons at the time. And no, I think Michael Irvin probably would have killed him if he would have tried to do that. Oh, or unalive man, yeah. him or whatever. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, so yeah. no, he would not have. A couple sniffs and it would have been Yes, yeah. he would have unalived him right there. I don't know if that's what <laughs> YouTube is. Unalive, you know, <laughs> no longer breathing. Whatever. <laughs> uh, so he said he said, stop messing with that man's confidence. Seven, six years in the league, $258 million. You have your, you handpicked your backup quarterbacks. You handpicked your offensive coordinator. Yeah. You messing with his confidence? Explain well, this. Okay. So there, there, is, there is a difference between your confidence on the field and your confidence in in general, uh, uh, being in a certain position, right? So I'll give you an example. One second, one second. Mm -hmm. um, the job that I used to work, mm -hmm. there was a there was a big difference between me having confidence when I walk through the building and perform my job duties and talk to my talk to my staff and you know held meetings with other departments or did trainings and stuff like that. 
there's a big difference between that confidence and the confidence when I go and sit with uh, the uh, executive directors and the CEO. Big difference in confidence there, right? There, there, there's 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 a there's a different level when you're on the field that you have to think at and operate at because everything as a quarterback, everything is out to get you. The distractions, the noise, the stuff that players are saying to get up under your skin, the the management of emotions and, and thought process of your teammates because they're going to see your face in the huddle so you can't show certain things. I mean, there was points in the game – where you could see the camera flash on his face, and he he just he looked shocked. He's been like that. We had a question. Uh, yeah. Why do we get rid of Singletary? I can. I mean, I can. I can start it. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, uh, hold on. Okay, I, I got. I got a number for that. For that answer. Okay. Uh, now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> you should decide. So he's like, he's, I'm he's, a, he's typing like that Kermit. He's doing the Kermit. Um. <laughs> But the short answer why we got rid of Singletary, in my opinion, was because uh, Delvin Cook was an upgrade. I mean, honestly, Delvin Cook can do a lot of the things Singletary did. I think Singletary was a product of um, low volume of carries. He was a, he was a product of uh, you know he I, I actually did a study one time where I noticed that when he ran nine or more times, his average yards per carry is about four point one yards a carry. When he ran eight or less times. His average yards per carry was somewhere in the sevens or eight, about almost eight yards a carry. So when you look at his final average yards per carry, it looks great, but he's not really carrying the ball. He's he's taking the ball, you know, and 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 he's not getting first downs on on a level you would want your running back to get first downs those tough yards. To me, um, furthermore, I think you you're, you're you're losing a lot of speed when you have Singletary. When you think about James Cook and how fast he moves, just think back to the holes that Singletary couldn't get to. Um, that James Cook can hit. And you'll see next, you know, in this game, you'll see in, in the game that's coming up that Singletary actually, uh, he had, his, he had his, 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 his strong points. But I think for what the Bills needed, especially if you're not running that much, uh, the little scat back in, 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 in uh, Cook will, will uh, persevere and get you where you need to be. It'd be a little more exciting too. Yeah. I think the, the, the sarcastic answer and the joking answer is 13 fumbles. That's why he's not here anymore. Yeah, also, you're right. He led the league in fumbles from the time he got to the league to the time he left Buffalo. I don't even know what he's doing, what he did on Sunday. But, right, right. But, yeah, he literally, if you look it up, this is this is serious. He was the worst um, at holding on to the ball. The ball security was, was largely questionable. Yeah. Thanks for the question, though. If anybody else has any more questions, we will gladly take them. Yeah. I think as a whole, Singletary was not a great pass blocker. I mean, obviously his size created an issue for that, and he wasn't a great pass catcher either. So mm-hmm. for the money they were paying him, uh, you know, being a drafted player at that time, it, it was okay to keep him around because mm-hmm. you you would still get a pop run here and there from him, and and you know he was a he was a good guy in the locker room, right? right? So for that money, for that guy, you know, okay, fine, we'll keep you around, but. Once he got once he got to free agency and they saw the numbers that were being tossed around for how much he wanted, yeah. it, it wasn't going to happen. Also, he wanted four or five million for per season. He wanted a bigger contract, and one, if you know the Bills, they're not paying a, wild, a running back. Nope. So James Cook, you're probably going to get him for four years, and that's going to be it. You're going to rinse and repeat. Yep. Uh, if I was if I was a betting man, I put my money on James Cook. Cook will be here three more years. Um, Beasley, I don't think Beasley actually wanted to be in Buffalo. I, I think, I think his time. I think that kind of feeds into what what, what my co-host Aramis was saying. I think there's something inside the organization um, that just didn't jive with Beasley as a as a man, as a player, and I think he just wanted to go. Uh, he liked, you know, the city of Buffalo. He even said when he left after the first time, he said, um, he said, I I I'm never going back to Buffalo to be a Bill. But I will go back to to visit my friends. Yeah. So he did make connections in the city. He did do things, you know, that that alluded to the fact that he didn't hate being here. It was just something about the team that just didn't work for him, especially after the COVID year. Yeah, I think the COVID thing was a big thing. That that that's really what. It's funny. There there's there's a thin line between culture and cults. There really is. If you think about if you think about some of the players that left the Patriots during their during their 20 year stint as the best team in the NFL or the best run franchise in the NFL those players would tell you it was hell every day yeah 
right? They yeah. hated being there. Yeah. They won. Yeah, great. They got rings. Yeah, great. But they were miserable. Mm -hmm. They were they were the most miserable millionaires on the planet, right? And I think you know, as a player, as anybody really, you you want to you want to love what you do, but you also want to love where you do it, mm -hmm. right? And I think one of the things that that weeds out a lot of a lot of football players is when they get to the NFL. There's so many different aspects aside from football alone that become a reality in your life the politics the perceptions the 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 public statements the public eye you know all those things create a certain weight on you and then w when you're dealing with that and then you also have to deal with uh, you know the the same stuff inside the building the, you know like the, the the inside of the at one bill's drive for beasley especially after covid was not a safe place right. it wasn't a safe place for him at all the 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 way that the bills allowed the public to come at him mm -hmm. you know with their comments about his decision to not get vaxxed and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff the bills could have squashed all that if they really wanted to if yeah. they wanted to get in front of this thing and say you know what beasley has a right to his own decision we as the franchise stand by him that would have squashed all the noise yeah but they didn't do that no they went the opposite they went so, the opposite way you know, I, if I'm a player and I see that you're not gonna, you're not, you're not gonna back me up. Okay, well, I see how you really Screw feel it. about yeah, me. Then I'm out. It. But uh, to to the next statement, it's actually a uh, commenter said that they think Diggs is ready to move on. I think Diggs. We talked about it. I think Diggs will be ready to move on if what he demands. I mean, it's not it's not money. It's not really playing time because he's got that. He demands people to step up to his level. He, I don't he's think tradable next year, right? His contract? Yeah, I mean, it's still it's still rough on you, but yeah, it, it's, I think we said it's it better than this like year. Yeah. Yeah. It's better this year than okay. this year. Okay. But I think Diggs, I think I don't think Diggs' book has been written yet. I don't think the story is over. I think Diggs just needs to see what he wants to see before yeah. I write that book. Um, confidently, I'm sure he would rather be, you know, somewhere else. Um, but I don't think that he hates it here. I don't think that that there's no getting him back. And to the point about Michael Irvin and saying that McDermott and 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 D and, and yeah, Diggs are showing up Josh by by pointing at it that they're hitting saying play smart, play smart, play smart. Mm. What did what did Von Miller do all last year? I mean, it's not the same thing, but what did he do? His mantra was, "Don't blink." Yeah, don't blink. Why can't you say why if we were winning? Why can't you say think be smart, be smart? Right. You should be telling yourself all the time, be smart. You know what flies in the face of that though too. When Josh was sitting on the sideline and they uh, they were about to get the ball back to go and try and score a field goal at the end of the game, yeah, they showed Steph Diggs going up to Josh and doing their little handshake, whatever mm -hmm. they did, and 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 he's encouraging Josh to get on the back. sideline, yeah. and yeah. then Josh goes out and he he finds him again, in. right? He he brings him down and they score the field goal, right? Mm -hmm. So so to me, you know. When you're trying to coach a player or you're trying to encourage a player or you're trying to keep, you know, keep a player aware of certain things during the game, I think that's OK. Yeah. And, and oh, I get yeah. what Michael Irvin is saying in, in terms of don't don't put worries into his head. I get that because I think that's the, I think that t to me, that's the message that Michael Irvin was trying to get through in terms of don't. Um, how, how, however he said it you know don't yeah, you, you, you just don't make him look, don't play. make him look dumb or whatever right you just let him whatever don't but make I, him feel but I think, dumb that's I think what it ultimately is. you know the the idea was don't don't put worries or don't put unnecessary thoughts in a player's head it's, they're already dealing with it enough when they're out there on on the field and for Sean McDermott to do you know all of this and play smart like Sean was right he I think people right. are forgetting that like Sean was right. He Josh was right. Was, Josh was dying out there. And you know Aaron just said Sean was right, right? If you don't do it, I mean about it. Watch the other shows. Oh, yeah. Pick I, up on the trends. For, Pick me up to say, for me to say anything like that. If he said Sean was right, I, I don't know what I'd do. But, no, you're, I mean, honestly, and I know you may agree, with, may disagree with this, but, dude, you're, you're, I'm, I'm not that mentally unstable. I, I I played basketball. I played basketball on a much lower level. Are you level. talking about you or are you talking about Josh? Me. Okay. I played basketball on a much level, lower level. Okay. And the things that happen to us in practice sometimes <laughs> was ridiculous. Right. I'm fine. I'm a man. Mm -hmm. Josh is a man. Right. A six year man. Two hundred fifty eight million dollar man. Yeah. If this 
messing your confidence up, I don't want you on my team. That's a great point. That's a great point. Michael Irvin, what are you talking about? Weren't you there with Leon Lett? <laughs> Weren't you there with, 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 with Moose Johnson and all them boys? Yeah. MSB, y'all boy, y'all, y'all didn't never get in each other's faces? Right. I find that hard to believe. Right. So for this, this statement was BS. Coaches, coaches would say a lot more back then, too. Yes. Because the pay disparity wasn't that big back then. You were 10 years away from smoking on the sidelines. Right. Stop it. Right. That's the problem with the, with the world now. People soft. Oh, yeah. 100%. Soft. S-O-F-T, S-A-W-F-T, however you want to spell it. <laughs> Soft. If that messes your mind up in that situation where you sucked, you don't need to be on my team because you can't lead me to a Super Bowl without getting criticism. Right. In a small market, 250 men, you got a target on your back, whether you do good or not. Oh, yeah. You're in the cover of Madden. Everybody's watching you. Yep. Do better, and the words will go away. That was a game where all you had to do, and I think I texted my friend. I said, I said, all you had to do was play field possession. Mm-hmm. And why do I mention that now this week? Because that's what we're going to against Garoppolo. Another game where you don't have to put up 300, 400 yards. You don't. Right. Because they're not going to. Garoppolo's going to put 240 on you maybe. Well, all the key players except um, Josh Jacobs is, is – uh, Devontae Adams. Uh, Devontae Adams is hurt. They're, they're all hurt. Oh, he's hurt, he's hurt too? Kobe Myers might not even play. Yeah, I knew he's that one. I didn't know protocol. Devontae Adams hurt. But, yeah, Devontae Adams is uh, questionable right now, dealing with a foot injury or something like that. They're, um, I think who, they, they got a lineman or something like that is dealing with an injury. Like, it, it's, it's, there's some key players that, that got some some serious injuries. I mean, I, I, I'm I looking at the defense, and I watched the game. Well, I watched most of the game today. I watched some of the All-22 from the, from the, the, the uh, LA, uh, Vegas uh, uh, Broncos game. Mm-hmm. And I saw some things on there I'm scared of, man. I'm scared of. What do you mean? I don't, like I said before the last game, I don't trust Josh's ability to read zones. I don't trust Josh, I don't trust this line. They have a linebacker, uh, what's his name, uh, Diablo. Mm-hmm. This dude is all over the place. He's all over the place. He's fast. He can cover. While we're on that, can I, can I, can I play the quote? Can I play the quote? Sure, go ahead, because we're about to bleed right into it un- unknowingly. Um. All right, so I, I'm going to play a quote from uh, Greg Cassell. This this aired today on the uh, Colin Coward show, um, and they're they're talking about uh, you know the 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 idea that Josh needed a little bit of help. That that's that was Colin's point. Uh, Josh needs help from the offensive line, um, but here it is. Don't be shocked if their if their quarterback DNA is already a little loose and wild to begin with. Don't be surprised if they press. That's what I see. What does the film say? Yeah, I did a deep dive into Josh this summer. Probably watched about three hundred dropbacks, and he's not a precision player. He's yeah. kind of a knockout artist, <laughs> you know. And and obviously they've won a lot of games, and he's played really really well in playoff games. We know that he's capable of playing at an extremely high level. This team, contrary to what many believe, is not really that good on offense. You've nailed it. They don't run the ball. They're O-line. They're trying to address it, but it's probably average at best by NFL standards. They really have one quality receiver in Diggs. We'll see what Kincaid brings to them, but really they just have one quality wide out. So it's been the Josh Allen show, and they've won a lot of games. He plays a certain way. What happened the other night's not defensive ball. I think we would all agree with that. Um, and he's going to have to get better just at playing with some sense of precision in the pocket. Um, he, he, he bails out of the pocket, Colin, too soon, and the film shows that. He leaves plays on the field. Then, of course, he'll make a spectacular play that only Josh Allen can make. But just the details and nuances of playing the position at the highest level in the NFL, he needs to work on a lot of that. And, again, I don't know how he's coached, so I don't want to address that, but that needs to happen. All right, let's talk Steelers. So there you have it, folks. I mean, this this is this is your two hundred and fifty eight million dollar investment, and I, I don't I don't really know how to how to soften that blow. I don't think we need to. I mean, right. to be honest, you know, when when you when you when you're a coach who read that scouting report. That we read. That we read the same one mm-hmm. that we read is was was given to every. Every team, and Every theirs team is more in depth than what we read because you know exactly. they got their own scouts on top of those 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 scout reports. One hundred percent, right? So, 
what we're saying is the Bills knew all of this and more, still chose to draft him because they believed that they could get the best out of him. Mm -hmm. They believed that he was a great fit, right? They believed that he had the mentality to handle being a quarterback in Buffalo, right? Okay, to a degree, they were right. But it took a guy by the name of Brian Dayball coming in here and becoming this this offensive guru that showed Josh Allen how to do it the right way. And Josh did it for, what, three years? He did it for three years the right way. Mm -hmm. And they were seconds away from, uh, uh, well, I think at the time they were seconds away from an AFC championship, but – they, that was Super Bowl. That was it. Would have been a Super Bowl. Thirteen seconds was, was was divisional. You sure? Yeah, positive. Okay. Thirteen seconds. So they uh, after that they would have had to have gone and played um, Cincinnati. Cincinnati would have had to have come here to play us if we won that game, um, and that that would have been that would have been the AFC Championship game in Buffalo. Um, but all it is is to say, this is this is the. This is the root issue that we are facing right now. And mm-hmm. this is this goes right back to the same thing that I've been saying this whole entire time. Listen. When you have a defensive-minded head coach, and I mentioned this in our in our live episode on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. When you have a de- defensive-minded head coach, somebody needs to come and put their arm around them and say, "Listen, I know you like defense, I know defense is your passion. I know that's I know that's your side chick. Mm-hmm. Okay. Load the offensive up. Load the offensive up. Put as Was many the- pieces on that side of the ball as you can possibly put, so that you don't have to worry about that. That part will be easy. And see, that's why I, that's why when you say a defensive court, the defensive head coach thing, I don't really say anything because what you just said is the way you combat that. Right. That's how you combat that. But instead, no. Like, I, do I have to do it again? Tredavious White, Greg Rousseau, Carlos Basham, uh, uh, Kyrie Elam, Ed Oliver, yep. Tremaine, Tremaine Edmonds. You drafted it before this year. You drafted two first-round offensive players. Yep. Two. And you're a defensive coach. Yep. You gave your – you gave uh, – your 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 first year offensive coordinator in Dable, Josh Allen, a raw piece of clay. And then you double back and you get a defensive player. Defensive player. And you throw in a, a, a mercy offensive player again. It doesn't work that way. Right. And I forgot AJ Epinesa for all intents and purposes, that's defense as well. The first pick and the next that's our pick. But the, but how many linebackers have we drafted that ended up just being special teams players? That's what they draft for. But to go back into, to Cosell's point, Josh Allen, what did he say? He said they don't have anything else. Mm-hmm. What did I say they last have show? One receiver. What did I say last show? If Diz goes down, <laughs> it's over. They're screwed. Yeah. Even more so than Josh. Yeah. If Diz, who's he gonna throw to? Right. This week we go against who is it? Uh, Marcus Peters and a rookie. And I bet you they're going to still throw the ball at Josh, even though Gabe Davis probably may draw the rookie or draw the old Marcus Peters. Now, here's the kicker. Here, here's the funny part. Here's the funny part. Let's say you swap out Josh Allen for Brock Purdy. The ball be all over the place. The Bills win that game. The ball be all over the place. But, see, that's the point. That's where I was getting at before. You, I'm glad you said that because that's what I was going to say before you uh, played the clip. The Bills did not have to put a 300 yards in that game against Zach, Zach Wilson. Right, the right. Bills need to dink and dunk yep. and preserve that 10-point that, that 10 lead. That's it. Take time off the clock. Take time off the clock. And keep the lead. That's it. It would have been me, easy. They don't hear me, though. All the underneath stuff, all the, the – see, this is the thing. This is the thing. And this is this is part of the – I was thinking about this today. This, this is exactly why Trey Lance gets cut and traded. Mm-hmm. This is exactly why a guy like that gets traded away from a from a Kyle Shanahan run system. Because if you're Kyle Shanahan, listen, I I do not want this kid going into a real game thinking he's got to be the superstar. He's got to win it all. He's got to you know beat the other team by himself. Mm-hmm. Just play my system. I've put enough around you where the job is 
Easy. You yeah. don't got to do nothing but just pass the ball short. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give you where you need to get the ball to. I'm gonna give it to you. The players on that team have the most rack yards in the league. Yeah, I'm gonna give it to you, and that's why it was hard for me to say it. But I said it. Dorsey wasn't bad in that last game. He wasn't bad. Right. But we didn't get to see the the, the whole potential of the offense because exactly. our Josh quarterback kept doing the same thing he's always done. Right. And right. and to Dan Orlovsky's point, he said seven snaps were were uh, Josh just out of control. He said, now what does that mean? He said, to me, when I say out of control, he breached contain when he didn't need to, which I said. Erratic field reading uh, erratic field reading with eyes, which he said, you can, his eyes are going left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left. Oh. He's not focused on anything. Yeah. He said, his feet are all over the place. He's not setting a platform. He's not, he's not building a, a sturdy base. Uh, uh, running when there's no reason to. Again, trying to go and take off as a runner. See, he's running when he doesn't have to. People say the offensive line. No, the offensive line is not that bad. I mean, they're bad. <laughs> but his life is not in danger every play. Right. Because what people don't people don't understand and they don't look at. See, what I told you before, I have a new appreciation with Osiris Torrance for the offensive guard position. What does that mean? I am now trying to learn how to how to read offensive lines. Mm. There were plays, as I said before, where Josh could have stepped up in the pocket and evaded the rush. Yeah. There were plays when the majority of the defenders were walled off, and Josh had to come up and slide to the left, slide to the right, and your pass was right there. Your dump off was right there. Right. But instead, as as Dan Orlovsky said, why would you scramble? He said, if you if you look at the play where his first interception, he said, watching Josh last night was almost like watching an adrenaline junkie. Yep. I said that in the Tuesday episode. Yeah. It, was, it was like he was just chasing a rush. And he and and like I said before, he said Josh gets confused with coverage. Not surprised about that. I people, I'm gonna hold this like I'm a singer. I have never in my life played quarterback. <laughs> I have never in my life played anything on offense. So if I can call it out, why? Where's Dorsey? Where's Joe Brady? Yeah. Where's Sean freaking McDermott? But this is the problem. Michael Irvin don't want the Bills to win the Super Bowl. Plain and simple. Right. He demolished this twice. Right. This is the problem. I've done worse to people at work. <laughs> I'm old, man. I'm retiring. 39, I'm retiring. It's over. It's you over walk with. Walk past people in the office. <laughs> just <laughs> doing this. Just, just <laughs> quote it right. Get it together. Right. Quote it right. <laughs> nah. <laughs> but watch. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Standing with a clipboard, but no, um, you know, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of merge everything I say from henceforth with what the presser said, and we're gonna talk in depth, you know, but what presser said and with the game coming up because a lot of correlations can be made, and so you're gonna kind of be like, why are they ambiguous? Why are they still talk? But I'm not. If you listen to what I'm saying, it's gonna it's gonna apply to the game on Sunday as well, um, because when you look at when you look at the Raiders, you don't need to put 300 yards. Right. You don't need to be a uh, I'm sorry. It's a bad defense to begin with. It's a it's a bad but opportunistic decent. And they have nothing to lose. That's true. And, and they, the, I, I was listening to um Hondo ah, I forget. They was he was and that's the one I, I told you Sal Capaccio show yesterday. Yeah. He said, We're not gonna win. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna come out and smack you in the mouth. He said, You guys prove to us that you turn the ball over. Yep. We're gonna try to take the ball away. Yep. Otherwise we can't win. <laughs> he said, "But you think the guys think that?" He said, "We know the, tr- the reality, but the guys still are going to go out there and play their butts off." Right. And when I watched that Broncos game, Russell Wilson was not great, but that defense was ready. Max Crosby was getting there. Uh, uh, Jerry Tillery was actually playing pretty well. They had one bad one player who is replacing Chandler Jones, who he might actually show up. After. You know what? Matter of fact. Let me get the name. The name for this player. He's a rookie. Uh, what is his name? Tyree Wilson. Chandler Jones is hurt. No, he's he's done. Remember the the, the tweet for. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he he's not home, even with the team man. right now. He's never gonna play with them again. But wow. So you see, guys, what happens when you when you don't have a Stephon Diggs? This guy <laughs> said, "I'm not playing," and I'm not playing. Yeah. This whole city has turned their back on Stephon Diggs pretty much, yeah. and he still put up ten for one hundred two. And a touchdown. The only touchdown of the game. Right. Think about that. Right. So going back to Tyree Wilson, I want to. I'm. I'm curious as to how they coach him up because he was horrible on Sunday. But I want to see if he's better on this Sunday. 
Because a week, if you're telling me you can't work and, and, and fix, you know, Spencer Brown in two years, you can't fix uh, 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 Gabe Davis in two years. Well, you said you wanted to get on um, on Spencer Brown, right? You you got his stuff pulled up, or no? I mean, my thing with Spencer Brown is he's going to see Max Max Crosby all day, all day long, he's and Max get, Crosby is going to get bull rushed all. That's what long. I was going to say. Max Crosby is going to be. Um, He's going. He's just going to be him. I mean, he's he's not going to do anything. He's going to run, try to run right through him. Mm-hmm. And if you have Josh Allen, sorry, on your fantasy team, I probably wouldn't play him. I mean, I, I, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't play Dawson Knox. Yeah, Why? Because Dawson else. Knox got to stay in and block Will Spencer Brown all game. Yeah. And they're not going to put Kincaid over there, not because he's a better receiver, but because he can't block that well. So you will get two guys walk back to Josh Allen, <laughs> but. Going back to my Tyree Wilson point, Tyree Wilson is going to have to play a de facto defensive end. 280-pound rookie. Got promise. There was a play where he where, where Max Crosby was already past the right tackle, and, and, and Tyree Wilson was still in his three-point stance. He, was a, he didn't even know the ball was down. He was looking at the ball. That's how bad it got. He was abysmal. Dang. But, I mean, that, and, and that lends to coaching somebody up. They can't replace him now. Wow. It's over with. You got to do it what you got. So that's yeah. the point. We can't replace what we have now. We got to do what we got, but we got to coach it up. And that's why last week when I said, "What is Kermer doing?" I need to see. A, I need to see an improvement. Yeah. Because they come in this week just like they came. Maybe not as much as they did last week, but they come in. Yeah. And Sugar High Josh is going to be back again. Yeah. Home opener. Sold out crowd. Everybody trying to throw encouragement his way. Come on, it's okay. You do better. Th- you, you'll do better this time. I, you know what? I think I think Josh is one of those people that doesn't need the love. Right. I think I think I almost think the love has an inverse effect on him. Mm-hmm. I think he he plays better when it's him against the world. Yeah. Because his whole football career it's been him against the world he's got to prove himself to everybody and that's not to say that we want to say he sucks on this is all you're saying and he doesn't need people to make him feel 10 feet tall right. i just want to make it clear for people that are listening to say what do, what do you mean it's a quarterback it's our guy you know right well he is but you but like you said yeah. you can't love everybody the same right you have to know what makes each person tick i got three children i love them all differently that's it but you love them and they know that so, um, all right, where are we at now? Uh, we're talking wherever, about- wherever. You said you want you want to go through. Uh, well, I said Dawson Knox. Uh, so, I mean, let's go through the emphasis that I had heard uh, on, from Raiders, Raiders podcast, Raiders uh, spots, and things like that. That they're going to try to enact against us. Uh, I already talked about the turnovers. They're going to try to force turnovers. Uh, they said, and I quote, tape shows Josh will put the ball in Hearn's way. You just got to dictate to him what he can and can't do. You're a $258 million quarterback. That's not good. It's not good when other teams can tell you what you can and can't do. Because that's what happened last week. Mm-hmm. But that's only if you let him. I mean, look, I, here's, here's what it really boils down to. Can Josh open his ears up? And open his mind to just being patient. That's the key, and I don't think that I don't think he can. Right, and I I, I agree with you. Yeah, 100%. that's the key. I don't think he can either. Mm-mm. I was thinking about this today, and I know this is kind of a hot take. And and listen, Bills Mafia, I apologize right now for what I'm about to say, but I, I've I've kind of been ahead of the curve this whole time, so I'm just going to say it. I think it's. I think it's it's going to take another quarterback and another coach to get us to the promised land. I'm Possibly. sorry. I, I you know, I, I think 6 years into your, to your football career as an owner, you have to be thinking about this investment that you just gave this guy. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Do I want to do I want to you know, have my F1 car, you know, win the race 
or do I just want to look good every year with a guy driving in it who I know is not going to win it? What is you know, what is going to take, and I'm not going to take over your point, what is going to take is the fans to not be excited about playoffs. The Chiefs are not excited about getting to the wild cards. The 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 – the Eagles, their taste, but see, Buffalo gets there every year. We we assume it. We know it. We've been Super Bowl, Super, Super Bowl, Super Bowl favorites. I can't even talk. But when they get to the wild card or divisional round and they lose, Bills are fans. Let's go watch. Let's go watch the plane land. Our boys yeah, did. Yeah, they what, did everything what, what they is could. Up with that? Like that's, why we need to feel sorry for these guys? That's you know, and they did the best. They, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. And see, the thing is, and I'm not saying Buffalo is, as a city is a loser city, but I'm saying having it taken away so long. From this city, now you get a, a, a small taste of it, over and over and over and over. I want the whole freaking meal. Yeah, I want the meal. I don't want to go to Texas to Brazil every time. I, <laughs> I want the whole steak. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that's part of the reason why Josh has no problem being the way that he is, and 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 probably how Sean got all of this conf- overconfidence to do the stuff that he was doing. Because mm-hmm. ultimately, as as a player and as a coach. You go to those games and you lose in 13 seconds, or you get blown out at home, and you you leave the stadium, or you come back off the plane, and you still got all these people cheering for you, yeah. screaming your name, yeah. and, and 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 wanting autographs and stuff like that. You almost feel like you can do no wrong, right? Right? Like I, I, I'll give you a prime example. I had I had the the very privileged opportunity to spend some time um, with a multimillionaire. Um, there, there was a there was a lady who needed to get to uh, New York City. I'm not gonna say her name, but very, I mean, extremely nice lady, and she, you you wouldn't believe who she is or who she's connected to, mm-hmm. but just an amazing woman, right? Mm-hmm. And I had an opportunity to have a conversation with her on the drive, and you know, one Wait, you of drove the, to New York City. I drove her to New York City. Yeah, it was a six hour drive. <clears throat> okay. Six hours there, six hours. Our back. family, our family trip to the Poconos. Yo, that that destroyed me. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, oh, d- to be fair, I, I've I've driven from here all the way to out to Alabama. It's a twenty one hour drive. Yeah, no, Dad's done Louisiana. That's nothing to it. Yeah. <laughs> what? I, I mean, I <laughs> from here to Edinburgh destroyed me. Dude. It was an hour and ten minutes. I did it alone this time, and I hated it. I like I absolutely I will never do it alone again. But when I'm like with my family and stuff like that, it's it's perfect. I love it. Yeah, I'll, love I'll it. meet you there. <laughs> I'll meet you there. <laughs> well, I mean, for you, it's easy. You could just toss a couple right. of coupons yeah, on pow, the pow, counter just, and get yeah. your plane tickets. But yeah, dude, what I'm thinking of, you know, go back. To, I, I didn't mean to cut your story out, but I just yeah. thought, oh, man, drove that that took me. Okay. <laughs> so so, uh, you know, I'm I'm talking to this I'm talking to this lady. I'll, I'll just I, I'll, I'll I'll call her Jay. I'll just call her Jay. So I'm talking to Jay, and one of the things that you know we got into, we got into some deep stuff, but but we were talking about um, some of the the psychology behind superstars, and you know she was talking about how you know a lot of times with with actors specifically, they they grow up in homes where they didn't get the attention they wanted, or they had siblings that got all the attention, and so they they go into you know this field looking for the attention and they once you get to that point where you and and she's actually experienced this too you know when you when you when you go somewhere and there are millions of people like screaming your name and and crying and 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 asking for autographs and stuff like that she said she said it 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 does something to you Mm -hmm. and and if left unchecked it can create something in you that wasn't there before oh yeah right and so my point in saying all this is it's it's just as likely you know what scratch that i'm just going to say it i think it's very likely that all of the overt love that bills fans have shown to this quarterback and to this head coach are first and foremost 20 years worth of wanting to show someone this kind of love. Mm-hmm. And secondly, a bit too much for the accomplishments that they've made. Yeah, I mean, the first year, even the first two playoff years. Okay. Because the first year, obviously, after 18 years, 17 years, right. you're going to lose your mind. I don't, I don't care how you get it. You're going to lose your stuff. Right. But then you, you, lo- you, don't, you go 6 and 10 the second year, and then you get to the playoffs again with your, with your new quarterback. 
okay, now there's another cause for euphoria. But then it starts to and you and you see my hands not going up any further. It's not good. <laughs> then you start. It's this is there. it. There. It's never here. It's just right. here, over and over and over. Stop. Right. I mean, at some point, get hungry for something else. And I was thinking about, you know, the 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 point of. I know you you don't you don't you think it's a waste of of, of assets, but my thing is, when are you just gonna say let Josh be Josh? You know, in in terms of, you know, the, the running is he's not listening to you. You're right. He's not. Right. I mean, it, it is what it is. It's called spade a spade. Yeah. You got to have an insurance policy because he's going to get hurt at some point. I'm not wishing Juju, but the way he plays, and if you let, and that's, and I, I say that because I heard it, and I, I missed, I was going to mention it last week, but they said after the game, you have to let Josh be Josh, but you got to know when to kind of rein him in. But Josh is just going to be Josh. Yeah. But Josh being Josh is jumping over three guys on third and third and 12 when he only, when he needs five more yards. Right. Josh is Josh when he's not running out of bounds when he's at the sideline. He doesn't need that extra yard. Right. Josh is Josh when he's fighting in the pocket for extra, you know, to, to evade a sack. Yeah. You're going to you, you're going to get hurt at some point. You're, you're, you're pushing 30. It's coming. Right. You got to change the way you play. Or Josh is be Josh. We need to find a guy that's going to back him up when Josh is Josh and he's sitting on the sideline. But do we honestly? And here's here's and this is not really a counterpoint, but but do do we think like let's 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 be as logical as we can possibly be right now? Mm-hmm. Do you honestly think that if Josh gets drafted and Sean McDermott decides to invest heavily in the offense? And he goes out and he gets an offensive line like what the Lions have right now, or an offensive line like what the Packers have right now, or an offensive line like what what the Cleveland Browns have right now. Do do we really think that Josh would would have very many moments of sugar high Josh? You want my real answer? Yeah, I, I think so. Cause I think it's innate in him. Okay, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I think it's. I don't see. I don't. I don't, I don't think sus- it would be. I, I don't think it would be as frequent though. I don't subscribe to the fact that he is doing what he's doing to because he has to. That's the thing. Okay. I don't. I don't subscribe to that. You think I, he wants to? I think he wants to, and that's kind of what Dan Orlovsky alluded to. That's what uh, uh, somebody I forget who it was. Joe Marino alluded to. Mm-hmm. It's just his game, and that's when they say let Josh be Josh. To me, that's what it means. When they when they when they want to protect him and, and keep him in the pocket and, and neuter him. Yeah. That's not letting Josh be Josh, and to me, that's what they mean when they say that. Well, that's yeah, and that's that's one of the things that they talked about. Um, I think they were talking about this on the radio. It, it's 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 boring. They mm-hmm. uh, there was an interview that that they were you know somebody was uh, on the show, and um, you know they, they they talked about how it it is a very boring way to play when you're just taking what the defense gives you. Excuse me, and and that you know that does lend to. What you're saying in terms of, you know, if it's boring, Josh doesn't want to do that. He wants to jump over guys. He, he wants, wants to, to try and get stuff. that extra yard. Yeah. He wants to, like, it, it, if you if you correlate that with some of the other things that Josh has said, you know, I want to go in and get that first hit to, you know, to really yeah. feel like I'm in the game. He pops up. I love it. I love it. Like, dude, like, when you're that, 31, you're not going to love it. Exactly. Anymore. Exactly. So, so really what you're telling me is we're paying you $258 million to, to go out there and be a child. <laughs> yeah. To be you know, a crash to me, essentially. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that, that's that's not what I'm trying to invest in. But I, I, I do want to say this, though. I do think that as a rookie, when you get drafted to a team to become the franchise quarterback, that is the most pivotal point for any head coach and any franchise to instill in that player what they want them to be, right? And if you think that if you think I'm wrong about that, see Trent Edwards. See what the coaches were telling him about just check it down. He didn't yeah. come in playing like that. Yeah. When he came into that New England game, he was tossing it all around the yard, and we fell in love with him. We wanted him to be the starter right then and there. And then all of a sudden he became captain check down because coaching got involved. That yeah. was his first year, right? Yeah, I think also nobody liked J.P. Lossman either. So, well, I, <laughs> Nobody okay. likes J.P. But, no, your point is valid. Um, but, no, I, I think – and, and I, I, I don't want the numbers messed up because I didn't get to write them down, but – in the last in the last three years or the last was it the second year now that Dable has gone I mean his turnovers have skyrocketed he was already turning the ball but they've skyrocketed yeah. so it's like okay what does that tell you I tell you nobody in that, in that room has any control over this guy when and the further to, to to further take it 
let's look what, what Dorsey said in his press conference. Dorsey, if I can find it. And this is where, where I was talking about somebody was getting testy with him. Uh, what do you, somebody asked him, what do you think is the most effective way to work with Josh? He said, you talk about it, you hit on it. Uh, Joe does a good job. Joe Brady does a good job of keeping him, uh, his, him level-headed and in the moment. Really? You, yep. you can't change the past, but you can change the future, which is true. That's true. Focus on the now. Somebody was like, do you think the coaching is being absorbed by Josh? These are not new topics. This is what the guy said. These are not new topics. Josh himself said yesterday he's in year six. He should know better. Right. Josh, before our last game, said, I have to eliminate the dumb penalties, the dumb turnovers, which he added to. Okay. Um, so the response to that was when you look at his career, yes, they pop up now and again. But when you look at his career, don't think you get to the level. I don't think you get to that level uh, and win the games he's won as a starter if, if, if uh, there were something that happens every game. So basically, he's saying if you if he threw multiple interceptions every game, he wouldn't be a starter in the NFL anymore. Whatever. A lot of the best quarterbacks all the time had multiple interception games. That's not the point. We didn't say he can't throw. Why did he throw those interceptions? In that situation, when you're up by ten, why did you throw those interceptions? The point is not that he had a multiple a multiple turnover game. I can live with that. If you're down by 23, 24, he's battling to try to get back. I can live with that. But there was no reason for it in that game. Right. Why did you fumble the ball? Oh, I, I took my eyes off the ball. This is not acceptable. For you to sit there with those puppy dog eyes, it's on me. It's on me. I, I can tell you every time, and this is funny, I wrote it down in McDermott's Zoom. Every time somebody asked McDermott about a different player, he said he's done some good things, and there's some things that he'd like to, to, to have back. Every player. He battles hard. He wants he wants to get better. Really? It's the I gotta watch tape all over again. It's it's, it's I gotta <laughs> but see what it is, is it's it's not even coach speak anymore. Yeah. It's I'm deflecting because I don't want to put my guys under the bus. Terrell Bernard, how was it? Oh yeah. He had a great game. Which I I, I see I don't know if you watched it, but I sent I you the did. video. I oh, you did, did watch what you sent me and yeah, you you're not wrong. You're I mean wrong. people that if you I, I will put the link if you wanna watch it, if you wanna watch it on you I'll put the link, just just comment. And ask me for it. I will give you the link so you can watch Terrell Bernard's uh, performance in the game. Because you do need to see the video. It's a good breakdown. Uh, it's like, eh, what, 17, 16, 17 minutes? Something like that, yeah. um, But it's a good breakdown. And it's, it, it really will, will speak to what he brings to the defense, especially what, what Dodson didn't. Um, but, yeah, when he asked him about about Bernard, he did, some, he did some really good things. He did some real good things. But there's some things that he'd like to have back. There's some things he'd like to improve upon. Why are you getting all these tryhards all the time? Yeah. And that's not even a disrespect to the players. But why does everybody wish they could get better at stuff? Execute. <laughs> right. You get one shot. Right. The Super Bowl is one and done, sudden death. This is not the NBA Finals. This is not the NHL Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah. This is not baseball. This is what? the only Is, is, is soccer one and done? I think it may be. What do you mean? Their, their, their playoff structure. Uh, yeah. Okay, so – out of all the sports I named, football and soccer are the two that, that, that are most prominent and have a one and done situation. Mm -hmm. You don't have a chance to learn from your mistakes. You execute. You learn on the fly. Right. So this is why, to your point, Josh is probably not going to lead us to the Super Bowl. Sorry. Sorry. The way the, the Josh is packaged as advertised is not going to get us where we need to go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like one of the things I want to point out too about about Josh. Before the Jets game, he was tied with Jared Goff, and I think it was 39 total turnovers, right? If yeah, something, not, yeah, something like that. He was, it was definitely tied. Right, and I, I'm looking at this, uh, looking at this stat here. Jared Goff hasn't thrown an interception, an interception in 359 attempts. 359 attempts. Now you you keep in mind, roughly in a game, a quarterback's gonna get probably between in that offense, thirty and forty. Probably about yeah, that's about right. Right. So to go three hundred and fifty nine attempts, that's almost a full season. Actually, I think that is a full season. Seventeen. Yeah, that's just about a full season almost. without throwing an interception. Yeah. Okay. 
when you look at the way that the Lions offense is constructed, he's got some he's got some players around him mm-hmm. now, right? And mm-hmm. he's got an offensive line. And if you look at what they did in in Kansas City, he didn't have to do a lot to win that game. He just had to do I think he really made just one play in that game that that was the the linchpin of of that win. And that's what we're asking of Josh. Huh? That's what I'm asking of Josh. Well, we we don't have the offensive line that he had. And that that, that was kind of my point. And and, and this is I, I want to get this out really quick. Josh and Jared had the same amount of turnovers. I'm going to go ahead and say most of those turnovers for Jared were with the Rams, right? Yeah. yeah. If not all. Um, but here's the deal. You're Jared Goff. You're with the Rams. You're in L.A., right? You you top dog almost anywhere you go. You're the, you're the starting quarterback for the L.A. Rams. It ain't Buffalo. It ain't Little City Buffalo. It's L.A., right? He accomplished what he accomplished, getting that team to a Super Bowl. And they could have won that. They weren't too far off from winning that game, right? But he was still a very young quarterback back then, right? So they go on to, you know, to 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 uh, uh, play after the Super Bowl, and I think Jared Goff has some injuries, and and you know the the offensive, um, like the players on offense, started to kind of fall off or get old, and it just didn't, it wasn't functioning the same, and you know a lot of the blame went on on to Jared Goff because you know the the reports back then were saying that. Um, you know, Sean McVay couldn't do a lot of what he wanted to do because of the, lim- the limitations of Jared Goff. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're Jared Goff. You went to the Super Bowl. That was the pinnacle of your career thus far. You had a couple of years after that where it really just wasn't working out, and other teams are starting to get better, especially in that division. And you get traded. Okay, being traded is a humbling experience, right? You go to this Lions team. They've never been to a playoff game in in almost 30 years. Yeah, they haven't won one in forever. Right? Yeah. And they haven't been to a Super Bowl ever. Mm-hmm. Right? So you're 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 at the you're at the bottom. I'll just I'll just say it like that. You're at the bottom now. Yeah. You hit rock bottom when you get traded to the Lions. You, it's almost like they sent you there to die, right? Yeah. And this is a Lions team that believed that they could win with Jared Goff. They built a team around him to suit his abilities and to put him in a position, and now look at him. They're storming the NFC, yeah. right? Yeah. And and if you, look around the, if you look around the NFC, depending on how Philly looks tonight, uh, with tonight being Thursday, I know this, this show is going to air on, <laughs> on Friday, yeah. but if, if, you look at, if, if you look at where the Lions are, at this point, they're not that far off from being able to compete with the Eagles now, right? And this is year three of Jared Goff being in in, in, Detroit, in uh, Detroit. My point in saying all this is this. There has to be something in Josh's professional career that humbles him. Yeah. To the degree that Jared Goff got humbled to be able to just start doing what's necessary to help the franchise and win games. Mm -hmm. Because it's too much about what Josh can do for this franchise. It's too much about what Josh can do during a game right now. It's too much about what Josh can do with his arm and his legs. It's too much about Josh, 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 Josh. It's got to be Josh fitting into the system or the system being being structured in a way that allows Josh to do what he does best. Mm-hmm. But Josh has got to stay within that system, though. I think Josh would be able to stay within the system that was built for him. But the problem is nobody outside of what Greg Roman or somebody to that degree knows how to work with that kind of. I, I would never trust Greg Roman around my quarterback. Well, I mean, I'm just saying like a Lamar Jackson. I'm just going to correlate with a Lamar Jackson kind of situation because okay. that's that's the kind of that's the kind of offense I think Josh would be best in, even though he's not Lamar athletically, but he's got the the same kind of mid run first kind of you know, he maybe he's not run first, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, he he's more he's more run savvy than most quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. So I mean, to your point about Trey Lance, that would have been 
interesting as a backup because a young guy coming in, if your quarterback wants to do what he does. Right. Sit him down. We got Trey Lance. Well, I was thinking more of, you know, being sat down by injury or something like that. Oh, but okay. well, yeah, but, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, at that point, go ahead, Josh. Do what you want. Yeah, <laughs> we got that's the thing. We got you. Don't want Bucell and 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 Kyle Allen to be in, right. in the game at any point. That's and that's another thing that's got to be on on Josh's mind if you want to really get to the point where, um, where he needs to be. You 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 got to understand. You got to preserve yourself yeah. because there's nothing behind you. Right. The same way Steph Diggs goes down after every play because in his mind, I don't care what he says. There's nothing behind me. Gabe Davis, he's a, he could be a number one in this league if, if I wasn't here. No, he couldn't. But when it's all about you, you think your thought above the coaches is the best bet at the time. I mean, that's really what it is. Like, yeah. if I if I'm if I'm if I'm like I'm I'm married, right? And if I decide what I, w- I want to go buy a sports car because. My my car's you know starting to have issues or or you know check engine light has been on too long or whatever right mm-hmm. and in my mind I, I, is it makes sense right car breaking down I got the money I'm gonna go do it now my wife may not agree that that's the best use of money at the time maybe I can just get the car fixed because that's minivan. more fiscally responsible get your minivan fit all your kids in there. We're not okay. So there, I don't know if you I've just messing read the notice on the way in. There's no mentioning of minivans on this show. Like I'm just gonna have to like edit yeah. that out. You edit that right on out. Yep, I'll get rid the of minivan door. part. Um, but, but <laughs> what was I even saying? What was I even saying? You were just um, you were making the illusion to the, the, the illusion. You were alluding to the fact that that when you. When you are when there's nothing behind you, basically when there, when when you have to make a decision and it involves um, someone else, another party, right? You need to be yeah. mindful. You need to be right. mindful, and you need to. You need, he's he's supposed to be in a position where he's considering the coach's thoughts above his. That's really what it boils down to. Oh, I'm glad you said that because Daniel, I didn't write that, but Dan, Dan Orlovsky on uh, one of those lives said he said. Uh, Basically, his coach, whoever I don't remember where who his coach was at the time, but he said he came up to him and said, "Hey, man, you're the quarterback. This is no longer about you." He said, "You got your teammates' livelihood in your in your hands. You right. got the coach's livelihood in your hands. You got the organization livelihood in your hand." And this is Dan Orlovsky. Yep. So I don't know if you guys know who that is or not, but he ain't Josh. No. And he even said that I am. I was not Josh, but I am no Dan Orlovsky. I mean that's that's it. So, to to your point, which is which is actually absolutely correct. Um, yeah, you have to think about other people. You are the face of what a franchise, right? They call you the face of a franchise for a reason. Everybody that's currently working there right now is depending on you to help them keep their jobs. And the thing is, why why do you show out? You show out to get paid, right? You got paid, right? <laughs> right. Now the next step is to win the Super Bowl. Exactly. And if that, if you got to be vanilla. You're going to be boring to win that. Do it. Yep. Or like I said earlier, I don't want you on my team. Yep. They're not changing the NFL logo. You're not going to get the Jordan stamp, the Jerry West, you know, whatever, the the, the logo of of the league. They're not going to change the the, the shield to your face. Yep. Get us a Super Bowl. You you really want to be like New England? You really want to be like Kansas City? Win a Super Bowl. You can keep that job for as long as you want. Tom Brady was boring. But he's one of the best, if not the best to ever do it. Exactly. Exactly. I don't hear Randall Cunningham's name in that. I mean, Mike Vick was good on what two thousand on on, never, on Madden two thousand and anything that mattered four. I mean, that's my point. Right. They're exciting that you want to be like them. Right. But they didn't win nothing. Donovan McNabb, four AFC championships, didn't win nothing. Sorry. And the thing is, Michael Vick is in Buffalo talking to you guys. <laughs> right. Right. What does that tell you? It's crazy to me, but. Yeah. To get to get into the, to, to the to the game before um, we got to go, mm. we we got we got we got a little bit of time. But before we got to go, um, like I said, the Raiders key to victories was service the first fifteen minutes. All right, so they expect the Bills to come out in their home, like you said, in a home environment uh, after the debacle that happened in New York. Come out fired up. If you come out fired up, you come out not thinking. You come out overplaying. You come out sugar high. Yeah. Josh won't be stuck because he's always the same, but. They're expecting them to come out and, and have miscues. 
Um, they expect the Raiders' defense to pick up in the second half. So don't be fooled by the first half. What he's saying to me is they accept, they're they expecting adjustments. They're expecting them to come out and show what they do and then change it at the halftime mark. Uh, halftime mark. Mm-hmm. Uh, limit penalties, obviously. Forced turnovers, again. Now, Joe Marino did throw in the little the trivia that the Bills averaged an 11-point win coming off a loss. I don't know how he, what he typed in, what search he used. I wish I had access to that kind of stuff. Yeah, because I believe it. But you know, I'm a stats guy. I want that. I you want gotta, that at my finger. Have a team to produce stats like that, man. I man. want, <laughs> man. You, I want that at my fingertips. You I need. Be able I need to a make team. a phone call and get some people right. moving on your behalf. That's right. What it is. I need a team. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine some of the stats we would come up with if we if I had, had well, only if only had one job. Could you imagine if I had one job? I'd be I'd be I'd be nerded out, we'll dude. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Don't worry about that. We we will get there. We'll get there. Let's see. Somebody asked uh, Sean McDermott, "Do you like the Do you feel like the decisions that that uh, uh, decisions had after Josh rolls to the sideline after the turnovers have landed?" Um, McDermott he he was wringing his hands, and I want you to do this. I want you to read. What does wringing his hands mean? I just oh yeah, yeah. It's a nonverbal sign of physical concern, distress, or guilt. He did this one other time that I that I've ever seen during a press a press conference, mm-hmm. and this was I think it, it was when he was talking about the future of Tremaine Edmonds, uh, mm-hmm. tr- either Tremaine Edmonds or Devin Singletary. One or two. It had to be Tremaine because if he was wringing his hands over Devin, I don't want you as my coach. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want you as my coach, right? But I, I remember pointing, <clears throat> excuse me, I remember pointing this out because he had gone up right after Brandon Bean was talking, and someone asked him that question, and you could just see his hands go right over each other and just start, you know, like mm-hmm. it, it's a it's a soothing technique that mm-hmm. people don't even realize that they do, but. Um, you know, anytime that people are, you know, rubbing, rubbing anything mm-hmm. together, the, 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 um, the sensation of it, um, lends to a soothing technique that, that is just, people just do it, uh, you know, whenever they're nervous or, or, uh, you know, feeling some kind of anxiety, anxiety or, or frustration or, or stress. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what you pointed out. And really, honestly, I, I wish people would have the ability to call things like that out. Yeah. yeah. I really do because, you know, people – I'm a strong believer in body language to begin with. Mm-hmm. I think people end up saying a lot more than they want to say with their body language if you know what to look for. And Sean Sean is – even even with his facial expressions, um, there, there's, a, there's a certain thing um, called micro-expressions – um, in the face and even those micro expressions indicate certain you know feelings or thoughts or expressions or or, or emotions um, that that you can glean from you know what you're seeing on people's face and man some of the stuff that I've seen from Sean mm-hmm. it, you know it, even even during the game like you could you could see you could see the fear on his face of feeling like he he's he might lose this game because of Josh. He 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 you know the the look of I'm I I'm not in control right now because the guy I need to be con- in control of is out of control and I can't get that control get back. back yeah. mm-hmm. You could see that look on his face during the game. Right? Now they got lucky. They went down, they scored the field goal. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But that look on his face of fear correlates with the decision on second and 15 to run a draw run in overtime. And that's something that we've seen from Sean now on a regular basis. Whenever he feels like the moment is becoming too big or he's starting to get overwhelmed by the the, the potential things that could go wrong, he clams up. And this is the second point. Uh, what I noticed to, to that, uh, he looked left. He looked off and left. What is in, in nonverbal cues when you when somebody's eyes are rolling? You lying. And I say it shows here. Uh, let's see. Can demonstrate doubt, reluctance to commit, suspicion, or contempt. Yep. So, <coughs> sorry. Um, 
that that's just not what I want for my coach. I, I don't want my coach to be in that situation. And he, he's he's almost put himself in that situation by committing to Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen. Right. When we talked about last time, somebody asked, uh, 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 they asked McDermott, you know, what about your number two wide receiver? He said, we got to, we, we got to, basically got to get one. Now, he didn't say he, it wasn't Gabe Davis, but when you say we got to get one, that tells me we don't have it yet. So he's not doing something that he's supposed to be doing. There's something wrong there. Um, so that feeds into to what I'm thinking about the, 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 the game on Sunday. Their secondary is going is, to, is, they're young. Like I said, Marcus Peters, and then they have a rookie. They have, uh, they, they like to fly around. And I'm worried because they did drop in his own looks that I'm afraid of with Josh. Also, they're opportunistic. They don't have, they don't have anything to lose. They don't think they're going to win. They're just waiting for us to script. So who knows what they're going to bring out here today? You know they're in West Virginia right now. They've been there since Tuesday. Who? The Raiders. They didn't go home. They went to West Virginia. There's a facility in West Virginia that supposedly they've been working all week. So that so that they can stay in Eastern Time. Stay in Eastern Time, but there's also they said other teams use it too. So I'm thinking maybe the Chargers teams on the West Coast. But the point is, they're cooking something up. Right. They're 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 ready. They're already ready. They're already, yeah. they're already acclimated to the time zone change. Right, because they they never left, yep. <laughs> and so it, this is not a team coming in from the west and dealing with everything that you got to deal with when they just got here. Mm-hmm. Right, the 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 jet lag and all that kind of stuff. They're going to be ready to play this game. They're going to be ready to punch you in the mouth in in your home stadium in front of your home in front of your fans. Yep, and they got all the confidence in the world. Why? Because Zach Wilson just beat you, and Garoppolo is better than Wilson supposedly. Right. Yep. So, and here's the other thing too. We didn't even get to see much of of Myers in 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 game uh, in week one for for the Raiders. Right. I could absolutely see him being a weapon in this game. If he with plays, as big yeah. as he is, and how well he can catch the ball. If he plays, yeah. So you know, I mean, I mean, the the, the big thing I'm worried about too, and this goes towards Bernard and Milano. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be frank with this. They run a lot of they run a lot of twenty one. They actually use a fullback a lot. A power run scheme. Our defensive line is, is penetrating. That means what? The offensive line, they're gap blockers. They're gonna get to the linebackers. Oh yeah. And what the line what the linemen don't get, the fullback's gonna clean up. They're gonna run all over. Us. And then Josh Jacobs, he he probably outweighs all the rest of them. The only way and this is this is this is going back to the the one thing that I I was saying the Bills need to be able to do to win this game. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have to put a lot of points on the board. Just, just score. Just score. Hot. Listen, and it's gotta be touchdowns. Don't settle for this field goal foolishness, and don't think that just because they're they're trying to run the ball that they're not gonna still be able to do some play action and get the ball over the top to Devontae yeah. Adams yeah. on a deep ball. Yep. Garoppolo can throw it deep. He's shown he can do that. And Adams is one of the best one-on-one uh, 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 deep ball receivers in, in, one of the, best in the game. Route right runners. Now. Yeah, he's just one of the. I mean, he's fast, and he's one of the best route runners. So, I mean. Like I said, that's that's uh, they're gonna try to get uh, Jacobs off too because he had he didn't have a good game on Sunday. Right. He only ran. He, I think he averaged like two point eight yards a carry. They're they're looking their chops at this defense. Yeah. And who's our third linebacker? I mean, uh, not who they who played. It, it's, it's. But just, that's my point. Who's the third? And it's, it's not Taylor, Taylor Rapp. Rapp. No, it is Taylor Rapp. Well, <laughs> I mean, it is. But I'm saying it, it on, on the Taylor roster, Rapp. like listed as a linebacker, it's what uh, Dorian Williams, I guess, but. Really? I mean, well, let's see. Let's go look and see real quick. Uh, how do you use this thing? Boom. Okay. So, according to our lads, as of 9-1 is the most current depth chart we have. Milano Bernard, Dodson, Dorian Williams, and Tyler so Medikevich. So Either Williams or Dodson. Yeah. I mean, if it's if it's against the run, give me Dotson. Oh yeah, I mean, but the thing is, at that point, if you're talking about they play they against the thirteen set, they they ran Taylor Rapp. You gotta you gotta come off that. You gotta be prepared because this team's trying to run on you. They won't, but you have to, you know. And that's how you that's how you lose a game again, being stubborn. Yeah, yeah. I I don't understand what this pride of of you know teams being. Being in a position where teams can't force you out of the nickel, to me that that's not that's not a point of pride. That's a point of 
you know, shame and arrogance. Like mm-hmm. you refuse to change. That that's really what it is. You you refuse to change and adapt and become better. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't force me to get out of the nickel. Well, okay. I don't have to if I just right. run it down your throat all day long. Like we wanted to run anyway. Like I'll take three hundred yards in a win. 300 yards rushing in a win. I, like I'll Kansas take that City all did. day long. What was that, 250, 245, that, that game when Kansas City ran all over us? Yeah. 250 yards rushing, and they won the game. And what was McDermott's response? Yeah, we, we wanted to take away the pass. We wanted to give him a run take away the pass. Well, you gave him a run, all right. You gave him the game, too. You gave did him the it, game buddy. Too. You, got us the, you got us the L in the worst way possible. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm looking at what our defensive line does against their offense. Because their offensive line actually looked pretty good. Uh, it was funny because the guy on the radio was talking to Sal. He was he was high on Greg Van Roten. He said, "I can't believe you guys got rid of Greg Van Roten." I said, "Wow, that's a blast in the past." You know, it was last year. I was like, "Wow, that's a name I didn't think I'd hear again." Right. Evidently, he's a starting lineman on their team, but on the Raiders, yeah. But wow. they like him. Wow. I mean, he. I mean, he was older. So I think he was like thirty-one last year. So he wasn't expe- exactly a spring chicken. Bless you, but um. Yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm interested in seeing if our defensive line was a real deal because we knew Makai Becton and uh, Dwayne Brown were old, old or coming off injuries yep. or both, whatever. But this line, I, what I saw, this line can actually block. They can pull. They can they can they yeah. get dirty. This is a great run blocking. Yeah, so line. I want to see if if what we saw last week was actually us or it was just a product of them being bad. Right. Um, obviously, we talked about the linebackers on both sides. They have the young linebacker that can, that can fly, and they have Robert Spillane at middle. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, you, I want to attack the middle. I really do. But I want to get away from uh, that Diablo, too, because, like I said, he looks like a safety. He's about the same size as Bernard, too. Wow. So, um, I mean, there's, their secondary leaves a lot to be desired, though, yeah. to be honest. And I don't want Joshua. Ooh, I can – we saw right. that last week. Right. No, just just just, just run the ball. <laughs> take just what they the give ball. you. You can run the ball against this defense. You yeah. Can. Just take what they give you. Right. But in inclusion, in conclusion, I think um, I'm looking once again in the trenches because we got to do better in offensive line. Yep. But I also want to see what Josh does to help create that pocket. You know, and if if you guys didn't follow me the last couple of shows, what that means is step around. Uh, your blockers don't run into the block. Don't run where the guy is. Yeah. You know, move up, get him outside the arcs, which is the natural pattern for defensive pass rushers. You bait them, you step up. That's why they always say step up in the pocket. Right. Um, I I don't have any problem with, with with James Cook again. People think that he's too small. He won't break tackles. I don't need him to. I need to line the block for him. I need him to see a sliver of hope, and he's gonna go through it. You know, they're not they're not trying to get a 150 yard a game rusher. That's not that wasn't their intent. Right. They just want somebody that's not going to lose yardage and somebody can catch out of the backfield, which is another point. Catch the ball out of the backfield. I don't care if it's Hardy, Steph Diggs, uh, Tavius Murray, uh, Damian Harris, or James Cook. Use it. Everyone I name can catch the ball. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I, I'm I'm still a strong believer. I mean, the, the, best offensive, the, the best offense in the league in the last four years has been the Chiefs, right? Mm-hmm. And the Chiefs in every game, have have done enough to establish the run as a threat, mm-hmm. right? And you need that. You oh, need yeah. that to be able to make yeah. the defense play honest. And yeah. not only that, but it opens up things in in the middle of the field and in, in, in the secondary for your receivers and for your tight ends because those players are now going to have to play up a little bit more that opens up things deep, mm-hmm. right? You get the play-action game going, all of a sudden you got chances, Right. And so when you think about the, the, the threat that having a just, – just, just a solid, effective run game, right? It doesn't have to be 100 yards a game. It could be 60, but it could be a very effective 60. The right 60, the, yeah. You get right. the right 60, you're good. Exactly, and, and that's the point. And that, that's really all I'm asking for. I'm asking for, the, for, for this Buffalo Bills team to go into the game with a mindset of – we need to establish effective runs. Mm-hmm. It could be thirty yards, but if it if it's if it's a twenty nine yard run, right that that they break off because, uh oh, we got good blocking, mm-hmm. right, and then we bust off another you know six seven yard run or something like that. That's still less than forty yards, but guess what? That defense is thinking about it now. And yeah, my last thought uh, for the show is is can we please use Deion Dawkins and Spencer Brown in the run game? That's what they're good at, run blocking. Yeah. 
don't give me all these a gap runs anymore. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't put in, in, in especially in, behind McGovern, man. Yeah, That's not oh god, please not behind McGovern <laughs> and not with not with James Cook. He's like he's too small and it's fine. Yeah. But that's not what he's built for. I mean, you can do it just to show it, but don't let that be a game plan. Right. And with that I'm done. All right. All right. Well, uh it's been a while since we did a, a recorded episode, but this has been great. Um uh, we want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um I think this is going to be the schedule, uh, and, and I mean, I, unless you all have, season long, yeah, yeah. So for the season, this is this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do a live show the day after the game, um, and, and you're more than welcome to tune in, comment, ask questions, how, however you want to do it, uh, and then the uh, you know the the, the episode leading up to the next game or the following week, uh, we're going to record it on Thursdays. It'll air on Fridays, so you'll be able to see the show. Um, the day after the game that's played, and Fridays, okay? Um, for the Friday episodes, the recorded episodes, any questions or anything that you guys have, uh, if you want to send it in to us Thursday during the show, um, we're, we're, we're usually recording between somewhere between 5 and, and 7.30. Um, you can send them in then. You can send them in at any point, really, and Anytime. we'll keep an eye out for those, and we'll try to get them answered on the show as best we can. Yeah, that text me, put it in a, in a comment, DM me on on Facebook, whatever you want to do. We'll we'll talk about it. Just uh, let me know, and, I, and if you're not around, I'll, I'll put it. I'll put your answer in the show, and I'll tell you where it is if you want to listen to it. Yep. Um, but like I said earlier, we want to we want to try to 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 migrate some of the people from Facebook Live over to the YouTube channel so you can take advantage of all the videos that we've already done. Um, this this Facebook Live deal was kind of a new new thought, and I like the interaction. I like you guys watching here, but uh, you know, go over to our YouTube channel, subscribe. You know, yeah. we want to get a following there as well. We got we got we got major hits here. Ain't no different over there, right? And you don't have to look at me the whole time. The sound <laughs> is better on YouTube. <laughs> Everything is better on YouTube. You get you get little ditties. My man's gonna perform on the, on the, on, the, on the intro and outros. No doubt. No so doubt. I suggest for my money. Go to Spotify and go to YouTube. Subscribe to both and pick your fancy. That's it. That's it. If you're looking for additional content, if you're already a subscriber and and, and you and you follow us and, and you you um you you check us out on Facebook Live and all that kind of stuff, and you're just looking for extra content, um we're we're gonna we're gonna be starting um daily conversations on our Facebook page. Um it, it was a it was a thought that came up. I mean we we, we text each other daily with all kinds of thoughts and you know i i just thought maybe that might be something that you know people might want to you know tune in and give their own mm -hmm. comments on and yeah. and interact with us and and turn it into a, a bigger conversation yeah um you know so we're gonna start doing that uh and i actually forgot to do it today but uh we'll we'll be starting that uh Diabolical. tomorrow we'll be starting it tomorrow morning um and you know feel free to check us out uh the 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 post podium po uh, podcast facebook page um I'm pretty sure we can copy everything over to Instagram from there too, but Probably. you know we'll 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 put it up on all our all our social media platforms. Yeah. So with which you know whatever one you're comfortable with, you know use it. You, Just talk to, to yeah, talk to us. Yeah, talk to us. Talk to us. We're talking to you guys. Once you guys talk to us, this is this is definitely not, not what you're used to. Not what you're used to. Is a good time. Yeah, yeah. So with that said, once again, home of the all truth, no sodium takes. That should be obvious by now. This has been the Post Podium Podcast. I have been your co-host, Aramis. And I'm his tag along. I'm Keyshawn. I don't know about tag along, but with that said, we are out. Deuces.